Holt and Prince George. Powered by Volcanic Gaming. This is the Cellar Cast with Corey Cellar. So this is the third episode of the Cellar Cast. Where's the camera? There it is. Okay. There's the camera. Um, so with me, I have two special guests, Sean Caldera, and a new face. Introduce yourself. Sean. I am the editor. I thought Corey's hands were like moving towards. Chris's neck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new face. This is a new face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we? Should we broadcast this? I don't mind if we broadcast it. You have the green light. Fuck it, let's do it. Fucking do it. Okay, so today Shit. we're gonna be playing some Smash Bros. Super Minimal. It's a it's a thing. Corey's one of our boys. He runs the Cellar Cast. Cellar Cast. Link up here in the post process. Somewhere. In the post process. The what? I don't know. You seriously did have too much to drink. <laughs> oh. What? Someone had alcohol? Controller. Oh. Alcoholic consumptions. That was not me. So this is the, what is this, like, cross-cast? Cross-casting? It's a thing. It's a thing now. It's a thing We're we making do. it a thing. So, but this you take fun. the lead. You're going to ask I, the questions. You're going to... Yeah. Yeah. This is... Wow. Shit. I didn't prepare... Half the thing about this podcast is that I do a lot of winging it. Really. Hey, Chris! What? You want to get your ass kicked, boy? No! Okay. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> well, all right, then. Well, that's the end of the cellar cast. I don't think it's really good. So if you didn't know already, I like to be Bowser. Bowser. Because... Well, f fun story. Growing up, I was a big fan of Charizard. Uh, oh look, he's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! He's right there! Oh, he's right Story there. Story room. Oh, okay. You know what? Huh? Huh? No! Huh? Okay. No, fuck. Now everybody go charge! <laughs> oh! What? Oh, fine, why not? No. Oh! <laughs> this should be evenly matched at this point. If not, well, it's gonna be me that's gonna suck the most. I've never played uh, Charizard before, so it's all good. Oh, okay. Oh, but anyway, uh, the, the fun childhood story is that I had a stuffed animal Charizard, and it was like a backpack, and I wore him around to like the mall and everything. I was probably that the coolest horrible. kid on the street. Um, I didn't live on the street, just to be clear. Uh, but, oh, oh god, what am I doing? What am I, oh, this is just terrible. I didn't even like tweet out to say I'm on Twitch right now. Oh, I should probably That's your that. first concern, not the game. Oh, I forgot to tweet about this. Hey! That is a whoa. How do you blow fire? Ah, that was the wrong button. Just B, not side B. Not that. I told oh. you. I told you. Oh. <laughs> I told you. I know. What? My boy. Side B. My boy. My boy. Side B. That's it. This is the mortal's power. A vision. Buster. Oh, hey, Buster. Smash! Backslash! I'm really happy right now. <laughs> oh god! Whee! Oh! Whoa! No, no, no! Please! Wow. Oh, this is something to say. Oh, Jesus! Where's the other B? <laughs> it's this. It's B. Oh, what? I have a different controller. Yep. Ah! The, it's the button that says ah! B! Stop it. Dude. I said B. I did Oh! Get side B! Absolutely frazzle dazzled, boy! <laughs> well, I gotta say that the. The, ma the yeah. amount of side B's going on here. So many B's. It's. Oh, oh no, no, no! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Son of a B! Oh. That was. No, that was terrible. Yeah, we're clapping because we. So how do you like tires right now? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long. Well, you nope. Where's your Charizard now, man? Going back to Bowser. Where's your Charizard now? To be fair, this is a very unfamiliar controller. Yeah. So Do we have another we'll uh, You want to use mine? Yeah. Oh, dear God. He can't fire! Oh, God. Wow, I'm Harry Partridge! 
Nope, stop! Somebody come down here and stop me! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Nope, nope. Ah, shit. <laughs> no! Put your Well, that's just rude. The first? Get wrecked. Whoa! Okay, this is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, now I'm gonna go wash my mane. Be okay now. I remember my shovel. Let my armies be the rocks and the trees. Is are we, are we all to to I don't know. I, it just kind of happened. I'm good. Okay. So, the editor, tell me about yourself for those of those of us out there that don't know what the hell you do and why do you call yourself the editor? Well, if you can't tell from the name, I edit. Oh, I never. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Oh, I thought you were. Blown. I thought you were just a tour. Yeah, maybe tour. Yeah, well, me too. No, actually, uh, I started editing back when I was probably in grade nine. Wow. I did it uh, as kind of a hobby, and I think it was in grade 11, I decided I wanted to see if I can make that a career. Nice. So, grade 12 uh, ended, I went down to Vancouver to do a bit of film school, did a year down there, and came back because I ran out of money. So now, that's, I'm, that's, now I'm working here. Yeah, that's totally fair, I get that. So, the big question, because I know it's, it comes down to even like, you know, Mac or PC, what is your go-to platform? Uh, I gotta say PC. Okay. Uh, what is your go-to editing software? Uh, Adobe Premiere. There you go. Adobe. Now, Adobe. do you have CC? Yes. Okay. I have the current year CC. Yeah, you were, like, running off of... Like, oh, God. Yeah, I think uh, I just recently uh, upgraded because I was only running off, like, CC 2015. Like, 0.3, I think so. A lot of stuff was outdated, so as soon as I finished up all the projects, I just decided to upgrade. I didn't exactly want to upgrade when I was halfway through editing something, because it just be a bit confusing. Now, is it going to make things difficult if I have a Mac and you, know, you have a PC? Not really. Okay. There's like ways to transfer files through okay. those. Okay. So you'll uh, still want to work with me, it's not going to be weird or anything? Just as long as you say you don't game on a Mac. Why would I do that? Because it'd be impossible. Seriously, why would I? So, why are you that? getting a Mac Air Pro? Oh, you know, just a little bit of gaming. Oh! Why would you, did you just say to me? <laughs> it's like the BC Ontario slap thing. <laughs> Listen here, you <laughs> little shit! <laughs> Might want to explain that. Yeah, we may want to give some context to that one. Why? Uh, you. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I win! <laughs> Get away from here! Boom! Well, uh, Boom! Boom! <laughs> no! Ah! <laughs> your foot's too... <clears throat> no! 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 Oh, yeah, so. Oh, okay. So it's not just me. Okay. This is like the first time I don't think I've ever come in the last place in one of these games. No, sh yeah. <laughs> it's <up>. okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, no! things have happened since the inaugural episode yeah. in your world. I, I, you, know, you know, I don't want you to have to give everything away. I gained 20 pounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! No! <laughs> Just getting um, fat. Fuck. The dad bod is real, man. <laughs> the dad, the dad bod. bod is so real. <laughs> it's so real. <laughs> it's so You're real. living up to it. Oh, Jesus! Oh, jeez. Oh, you bitch. Um, what is happening in your world besides gaining weight, Sean? <laughs> uh, well... Tell Boom! <laughs> Best I held it! Held it. Uh, uh, well, oh, man, see. okay. How am I? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that kills. 
No! Oh god! <laughs> come, come here, little child! <laughs> come here, child! <laughs> My face in your face! <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! Bitch! Bitch die! Bitch! Bitch yeah. Oh god! Oh god! No! 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 Shit! No! So uh, <laughs> we're gonna be opening up a computer lab from town. It's gonna be 18 gaming computers. I that was guess 12. No, 18 in total. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's a big ass number. That is a big number. Eagle. Uh, hang on. <laughs> how many, how many well, it depends what province you're in. How many fingers? Um, is that? One, you're in Alberta, eight, it's legal. But anyway, continue. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, Somebody <laughs> drop that ball. Dad. <laughs> Not that drunk. No, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, we really want to boost up by the digital media presence in Northern BC. Yes. Nice. And, uh, what's this, uh, what's this lab called? It's called Volcanic Inc. There you go. But the services are called Volcanic Labs. Right. You heard it here first, folks. There you go. Wow. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. I can't choose. I don't want to, I don't want to put too random. much of it right now. Actually, yeah, yeah, let's all hit random. Yes. <laughs> Good on numbers, good. Yeah. I should have seen that. Well, guys, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out as well as I hoped. Thanks yeah. for the solar cast. So, we did that was a very failed attempt of me trying to be good at S Super Smash Bros. Clearly, I have far more work to do. Um, you know what? You got spunk, kid. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Nope. I can't. I just, I can't. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. So. You did well, Grasshopper. Yeah. It, it was fun. It was fun. I, I don't really have any other topics to really talk about except the fact that esports is growing in BC. Yeah, you know, like, let's let's talk about it right now. Um, So there's this big Dota tournament that's coming in. Yeah. That all of a sudden, all these people are now looking at esports survival industry. Where was this tournament before, Sean? Seattle. And Seattle where is it now? Some, it's going to be in Vancouver at the Rogers Arena. $24 million USD estimated prize pot. Um, it's nuts. I could pay my rent and I'd have my car paid off. And, and then some. And, 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 and some spare change. Well, like, and that's the thing. It's like esports... Up here, it was so hard to get people's heads turned on the idea that esports is a viable industry. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this pops up, and everyone's just like, "Oh yeah, I, I do the esports." This like, is a thing because why do you think <laughs> why why do you think people are doing that, Sean? Because there's so much money in it. Yeah. People don't understand that this is a two billion dollar industry, like around now, but it's the only entertainment industry that's grown over five thousand percent in five years. It's nuts! It's nuts! And only now are people understanding it. Which is why we at Volcanic Gaming uh, Ping, Plug in. <laughs> Title drop! <laughs> plug in right, I'm, right, right here, right. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. It's interesting. Digital media it's going to. Digital media. I'll wow. just hold it here. I'll just hold it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. You were yawning. He's doing his own well, thing. Put it away. Okay, I'll put it away. Put that shit away. Huh? Well, yeah, digital media. That's a <laughs> Viable career option. Viable career option, indeed. Do you guys want to just play some more Smash? Or we? I don't know. It's been it's been fun. How oh, about how about oh. how about this? How about this? What? What are what, what are we? Oh dear God. That that works. Yeah. Now it's just you and me and Please rephrase that sentence. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a three way. <laughs> <laughs> it involves gangbang. <laughs> oh, sorry, was that too much? Okay, I'll censor it a little bit. It rhymes with fling flang. <laughs> flang flang. Oh, 
And to think that I'm throwing Matt's uh, interview after this. <laughs> I mean, it is tax season. It's just so taxing. But like, I think having people having to watch this part is taxing. <laughs> just, just saying. It's it's been a lot to handle. I mean, you know, there's there's fur flying everywhere. Are we on the topic of fur still? <laughs> I don't know, I lost track of who's who. So this is another new segment of Shut Up and Start Up, and with me is Matt Hutchin. Matt, thanks for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. So to start off, let's uh, start off simple. Tell me about yourself and the career background. I know we've had these conversations, but you know, for those of you who don't uh, know you, of course, Matt, sure. uh, let's, let's start. All right. So I'm originally from Kingston, Ontario, and had lived there most of my life, uh, and then moved out here to Prince George just about four years ago now. I came for family reasons, and uh, I have been pleasantly surprised at, uh, at how great the city is. Um, and professionally, I've, most of my career has been spent doing tax and bookkeeping and finance for small business. I had a practice back in Kingston that I ran for about 18 years. Uh, that helped small business owners make sense of their financial data and, and understand um, what the bookkeeper did for them and and I usually refer to that as kind of being a translator and helping make the numbers make sense to the business owners so they could make more uh, strategic decisions about their business and and uh, hopefully improve their business and a big part of that was uh, was income tax preparation as well every year for the, the big crunch during March and April right uh, and then uh, a couple of years before I left Kingston, I, I uh, ended up being the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce there. So I had a good chance to experience what it was like to really be, you know, spending every day working at trying to support businesses in the community and build the, the entrepreneurial climate in the, in the city. Uh, and then moved to Prince George and uh, did a bit of consulting and, and for quite a while was the uh, executive director of Innovation Central here where the vault is. and, and mm -hmm. uh, Got a chance to work with uh, entrepreneurs and innovators uh, in the region and continue to be inspired by them and the things that they were doing. And got to a point where I could no longer kind of ignore the, the call of a return to entrepreneurship <laughs> and needed to get back to doing that myself. And so uh, just a couple months ago, rebranded my, my tax business uh, to TaxWorks and now starting to build that company. And that kind of leads into my next question. Of course, you know, you mentioned that uh, you were the former executive director. And at that time, when I had moved to town, that was, of course, the role that you were in when I met you. And, uh, you know, because of you, you know, you've kind of helped me push myself to network a little more within the community, meeting uh, Sean Caldera of Volcanic Gaming. And, of course, you know, just kind of being a an ongoing uh, presence, just being in the hub space. So I want to. So first of all, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> that. It, it's all it's all been Matt's <laughs> Matt's doing here. This is why Sellercast is in existence. Is because of Matt. So thank you. Thank you. So tell me about TaxWorks. You you had uh, the official launch a couple of days ago. Well, it's you know as I mentioned before, my the bulk of my career has been doing uh, finance and and right. tax work for people and for small businesses. And so I've come to sort of embrace and realize that that's sort of my my superpower in the area that I'm uh, that I most enjoy working in and, mm -hmm. and uh, can help people the most. And so this time around, in in thinking about how I was going to approach that business, it was a really uh, the chance to sort of do this again has been really great for a couple of reasons. One is it lets me exercise the demons of the things that in hindsight I wish I had done differently the first time around when I had this kind of a business. Uh, and secondly, I really apply the, the things that I learned being involved with, with ICS and, and right. being involved in a tech accelerator and learning about how to build a scalable tech enabled company. And so that's really uh, added some uh, extra motivation and sort of scale of ambition for this this company this time around. Uh, my practice before was basically like a lot of other professional practices. It was just me banging out billable hours and, and my capacity was limited to the number of clients that I could physically serve mm -hmm. uh, in doing that work. And so this time around, I really uh, have a mindset towards scale and, and 
Uh, we want to grow a national clientele and and uh, build a team based out of Prince George here that serves the country and and leverages technology as best we can to achieve that. Uh, and really just uh, see what we can build. It's mm -hmm. tax is uh, a pain for so many people. Uh, so I think there's there's great opportunity there. Uh, and this time around, we're trying to approach it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're we've got some innovations within what we're doing with TaxWorks. Uh, one is around just you know the brand and the personality of the company. The the spelling of TaxWorks with the W E R X is kind of purposefully misspelled to to try and indicate a little bit of uh, you know approachability and and uh, different personality than than uh, other players in the in the income tax world. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it too. And and the language that we use in our communications and the way we deal with our clients is going to have some personality to it and some humor. So that's one of the ways we're trying to to be a little bit different this time around. And for me, as you know, as a as an entrepreneur, that uh, that gets me excited about doing that work every day because it's going to be more fun for me to to have fun with mm -hmm. the work and and in the relationships that we have. So uh, so I'm really excited about that part of it. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously it's still early, but, you know, you seem to obviously have that, uh, that process. Um, as far as like, you know, as an entrepreneur, especially in uh, the tax world, of course, um, what is kind of a typical daily routine for you as far as, you know, from, you know, when you wake up in the morning and, you know, obviously this isn't exactly a nine to five type of deal, but, you know, what's, what's kind of that routine to kind of give people an idea uh, of an entrepreneur in this specific type of uh, industry? Yeah. Well, this is a, you know, because it's so seasonal, it's a bit of a unique um, field to be in. So the days are, are different depending on the, the type of time of year that it is. Right. Um, for me, these last couple of months in January and February, it's been a lot of fun because it's been the most time that I've had to actually work on the, the planning for the business. Um, okay. You know, before, especially with a professional practice when you're just trying to bang out billable hours, mm -hmm. uh, any time you're not spent doing that client work, you're not earning any money. And so uh, I never really had or took the time to do a lot of that strategic thinking and planning f around growth and, and uh, scale for that business. So it's been fun these last few months just to have all that, that time to, to develop systems and think longer term about strategy and growth and, and that sort of thing. Um, pretty soon, uh, I'm hoping that the days will be chock filled with with actually performing that work again and, right. and uh, working with the clients that we've already secured and continuing to attract new clients over the, the balance of the tax season. So uh, pretty much very soon the average day is going to be hammering away doing the work and then trying to balance that with uh, with the other sort of marketing and, and uh, admin pieces around the business. Um, this time around I've got a lot more attention to the, to the marketing piece so we'll have a very active social media presence and uh, so planning my time and, and schedule around that and, and then drawing in other folks as we need to to help uh, okay. execute on some of that stuff as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, average day right now is sort of that mix of mm -hmm. actually doing the client work right. uh, as well as the, you know, the marketing and communications and relationship building and, and other components that will hopefully uh, help grow the business down the road. Okay. And, uh, you know, you talk about building relationships, of course. Um, but as, as far as like post-secondary students that, you know, are uh, reaching uh, towards graduation and they're looking at the industry, uh, whether it's, you know, business students uh, or non-business students, you know, what would be uh, your top five pieces of advice for post-secondary students? Uh, I think in general, uh, one is certainly to be uh, spending some time learning financial literacy uh, and you're probably going to have to put in a bit of time to try and figure out where you can get that information because they, you know, they don't teach that in school. Um, but finding whether it's organizations or online resources or or other programs by other organizations that will teach some of that. Um, and that that umbrella of financial literacy covers, you know, budgeting uh, and sort of personal cash flow planning, savings and and investment and all that kind of stuff, uh, as well as understanding your tax. Um, situation a little bit and right. what you know what reduces your tax payable what increases your tax payable if you're self-employed or you've got a side hustle what are the tax implications of that um, and really just starting to understand that and I'm amazed uh, continually at the number of my clients 
who are you know well into their adult years and 40s and 50s and and still don't really have a handle of what's going to happen they they really don't know uh, when they hand their tax stuff over to me what the balance is going to be they you know they would be equally um, surprised whether I told them they had a great big refund or if I told them they had a, a huge amount owing and mm -hmm. so uh, to me as a as a tax and a finance guy uh, it's unsettling to me <laughs> that uh, that people wouldn't understand their own circumstances yeah. like that uh, so I think you know and your personal finances are going to drive uh, a lot of aspects of of your life going forward your own personal sort of sense of security and happiness and your relationships and and family and all that kind of stuff you know money is often the most contentious issue. Uh, I've had, you know, a lot of clients who, um, their their relationship with me as their tax preparer to them is more of an intimate one than even their physician. They're, they would rather talk about health stuff than talk about money stuff mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. So uh, so it's a, it's a delicate subject at times, but uh, it's, it's such an critical part of life that you really need to, to take the time to, to learn it. So first and foremost, I think really, uh, take the time to understand that and figure out the, the resources and find the advisors or people in life who can help provide that advice. And it's never too early to, to start to understand that stuff. Um, Me being <laughs> someone who's living on their own away from home, my dad being the human calculator in the family, he's the my first go-to, I guess. Yeah, but, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so to have resources like that are really important and, and then make sure you use them and ask the questions and be humble and be curious and and uh, and learn what you can. Um, you know, sometimes when you're young, you hear all these stories about or you know recommendations or advice about save right away and sock your money away and putting uh, a little bit of money away when you're young is you know is going to be better longer term than putting a lot of money away when you're older because of the compounding uh, factor and growth of, of money that's invested. Mm -hmm. That's certainly true. I uh, and I didn't do that when I was young. So playing catch up now and in, in my middle aged life. So um, for as terrible as that sounds, when you're young and you feel invincible and and uh, um, you got other things you want to do with your money, uh, some sort of financial discipline to to save uh, at least some small portion and just get into that routine and and uh, that discipline. I think is uh, is really important too. Because they're, that growth factor of the money is is really important, right? Um, and then it's there whether it's just accumulating for retirement or whether it's actually savings for you know some other great milestone in life, whether that's a down payment on a home or um, or any of those things, investment in a business. Mm -hmm. uh, then the money's there. So, uh, so I would certainly recommend that. Um, I've seen a lot of clients successfully, really, in terms of building their own personal wealth, uh, do that through real estate holdings. So they'll buy. Um, a rental property, maybe a fourplex or a sixplex apartment or something like that, or have uh, a couple of homes that they, they purchase and they rent. And that seems to be a really effective way to, uh, to accumulate personal wealth over time. I've seen people who, you know, they, they acquire those properties maybe in their early 30s. Uh, the 25-year lifespan of the mortgage gets paid right around the time they're contemplating retirement from their professional career. And so that extra cash flow that they get from the properties uh, is kind of a top up to whatever pension right. income they have and yeah. replaces that employment income a little bit. Uh, and for it's been interesting for a lot of the men, you know, it gives them something to do. They can go be handyman at the property and tinker with stuff and do renos and replacements and, and that sort of thing. So uh, having that long term view to how you're going to build personal wealth, I think, is uh, is pretty important, too. Okay. So that gets us to three. I don't know if I got. Oh, no, that's OK. That's OK. That, yeah. <laughs> You know, three is fine. That's good. Perfect. It's it's definitely uh, an area that, you know, I'm needing to improve on. And I think for everyone that's going through post-secondary as well as finishing post-secondary, for sure. For sure. And it's nice to, of course, have something that's local right here in Prince George for a lot of post-secondary students, whether you're at UNBC or CNC. It's yep. perfect. So, awesome. Yeah. Uh, TaxWorks is, of course, a new startup uh, obviously launched uh, officially two days ago. Yep. And, uh, you know, what what is it about the startup community um, here in the Northern region that really motivates you to be an entrepreneur? Uh, it's, well, uh, having been an entrepreneur in Ontario and, and now again here, right. you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. I think 
anybody who's an entrepreneur at heart and who is driven by the, the challenge of creating something of their own and, and is willing to do whatever it takes to, to make that happen and, you know, be the last person paid and be the first one in uh, the office every day and be the last one out late at night and, and not have any sick days and vacation days and that sort of thing while they build the business. Uh, there's a there's such a unique spirit that that causes people to live a life like that, um, and I'm just really inspired by the other folks that that are motivated that way. And and so to be involved uh, in the entrepreneurial community in general, just to to learn about other business owners and what they're doing and the ways in which they're committed to their business and sacrificing and and that sort of thing is has always been inspiring to me as an entrepreneur as well. Um, with what I do professionally, it gives me a chance to understand more about a lot of the businesses, at least from a financial aspect. Uh, and then in working with them around the financial piece, get to understand more of some of the strategy and, and the things that they're doing and have tried and, and which have failed or are looking to do and they want to understand better whether that's the right strategy or not. Uh, so I've been really blessed to be, to be further integrated into a lot of those small companies that way and, <laughs> and understand them even more. And that just helps to feed that whole sort of uh, cycle of motivation and inspiration. The more I get to learn about different businesses, the more I get to feed off of the, the energy and the, the passion that those entrepreneurs are bringing to their business. Uh, and all of which I can only sort of help absorb and, and uh, use it in my own. There you go. And, <laughs> you know, that's, that's motivated me to create a podcast. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's kind of turned into more of a YouTube channel, but... I mean, the heart is there, you know, the, the message is still there, of course, to create content, do something that you love, that you're passionate about, and being around, surrounding yourself with people that have that same energy is so crucial, like you had said, yeah. really. Um, is there anything else you want to Well, add? the other part of being plugged into an entrepreneurial community is, is um, you know, if you can create that that peer group, whether it's formally through some kind of a networking group or other sort of association or just informally amongst a group of peers. Uh, I found that incredibly important and incredibly powerful throughout my entrepreneurial career. And we had, uh, you know, back in Kingston, for example, there was a number of us who were young entrepreneurs at the time. And and so, you know, we're going through the same battles and you'd, you'd look up from your desk and it would be 1130 at night and, and realize you hadn't eaten dinner. And, and so, you know, a couple of phone calls go out to see who's still at their office because this was before you could text and and uh, and message everybody. So phone Land calls would go were out. a thing. <laughs> Landlines were a thing. Okay, <laughs> cords on the phone and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but you'd call around to the people that you knew were likely still working, and you know you'd set a, a dinner date for Tim Hortons at midnight for a bowl of stale chili and a and a hard roll. And but that was that was what it was, and so you can kind of commiserate. <laughs> together with people who have the same challenges and and we made it uh, as fun as we could too we had a um, you know we all, we all knew this the stat that 85 percent of businesses fail in the first two years um, so as soon as anybody reached their two-year anniversary we would have a welcome to the top 15 percent of entrepreneurs of all time oh ceremony <laughs> for them and and celebrate that milestone and Woo-hoo. yeah so it uh, so you you know the days of uh, entrepreneurship are long and hard and frustrating and so sometimes you need those little glimmers of hope and yeah. those reminders that uh, you know if you have been successful to some degree and are still around at least after two years then you are literally in the top 15 percent of people all time who've ever done it so yeah. it's uh, it's worth celebrating and I mean you keep doing so many different things as far as entrepreneurial uh, endeavors and obviously you know you're still doing it you still have that motivation you still have that energy because you're always meeting new people and you know that that just helps the overall yeah process. it's been great and it's you know it's not without its uh, its trials and tribulations too I've had a couple of business failures in my in my path and uh, learn from them and use them as motivation too to, to just help uh, put that extra little bit in to make sure that this next time around is going to be uh, another success instead of another failure and and learn what you can from it and carry on there you go all right yeah. well that's it matt i appreciate you to being on here uh for shut up and start up uh this is another wonderful segment uh right here on the seller cast in the vault thanks so much thanks matt cool that's great appreciate it thanks